Hi, I'm Lorraine Rimmelin from watercolorartisan.com. And today I'm gonna to share you my buyer's guide on watercolor brushes for beginners and beyond. You know, when we start painting, nobody shares with us the difference in the types of brushes. I'm not talking the difference between a round and a flat brush. I'm talking about the difference between the hairs at the end of our brush. What is the difference between a synthetic brush and a natural hair brush? And why would you choose one over the other? So today I'm going to share that with you and I'm going to show you the different usage of what you would expect from these brushes. So please stick around to the end because I have a bonus buy at the end that you're not going to believe a great deal. Let's look at the brushes and compare their usage. So the first thing I want to do is I want to just talk a little bit about the different types of hair we're, we're getting on a brush. A synthetic brush, what's the beauty of a synthetic brush is that it holds a point at all times, no matter what you do. So every time I put this brush down, it bounces right back up into a beautiful point every time. That's the beauty of a synthetic brush. You're always gonna get that nice spring and a beautiful point. So if you want to do some detail work and you need a point that's gonna stay nice and sharp for you, this is definitely a brush you're gonna to wanna to buy, a synthetic brush. Then we have a natural hair brush, a squirrel brush. The beauty about a squirrel brush is it holds a tremendous amount of product. So I can get a lot of paint and pigment and water into this brush to bring out to my paper. The only downside is when I use the brush, as it starts to delete the water, I lose my shape and it does not come back. So as I use the brush and it dries up more and more, every time I use it, it flattens out and it gets a funky point. So if you're doing very wet work and you wanna bring a lot of your pigment in, you definitely want to have a brush with a natural hair opposed to the synthetic hair, but I'm not gonna ever get the spring or the point on this brush. I get it when I go back into the water and I fill it up, I get a beautiful point again. And it is a beautiful point. The um, next brush I have, and, I'm, and I, I'm trying to use this kind of the same size brushes to give you an example, but this brush is called Silver Black Velvet. And it is a blend of natural hair and synthetic hair. So sorry, my brush is a little beaten up, but you can tell I use this brush a lot. So now when I come in with some water in this brush, I get a beautiful point, but I also get a little bit more of a ability to carry my pigment with me. After a while, it will start to flatten up, but not nearly as bad as a complete um, natural brush because it does have some synthetic in it, it will have a little bit of a spring back. This is a synthetic brush that is made, it's called Mimic and it's made to mimic squirrel. So it gives me that nice point and it supposedly holds a little more pigment. This is a very, very inexpensive brush. And I tell people if you're absolutely first time out doing watercolor, these brushes run in a craft store, maybe $4, definitely under $5. You might wanna start with a brush that is not expensive at all. So you're not making a big investment, but it will do the job, especially for a beginner, but it's not gonna carry the same amount of pigment that a natural synthetic blend would do or a, or a natural brush would do. So let's talk for a moment about what does that mean, carry a lot of pigment? So now I'm gonna show you how much pigment we can get onto these brushes. So let's start with the most inexpensive brush. I have a puddle over here that's just slightly tinted so you can actually see the drops when I pull them out of the brush. So I'm loading up this brush with um, my pigment and I'm gonna bring it out here. And with this brush, I'm gonna put squeeze out all of the pigment that this brush would hold. And you can see as I do this, there's not a lot of pigment there because the synthetic brush doesn't hold a lot of color, doesn't hold a lot of pigment. And that's just because of the type of brush it is. What I really do love about this particular, the red root, the ruby satin brush is 
Um, it has a beautiful point, but I love it for lifting color. As a watercolorist, when I want to go in and I want to change the value in certain areas within my painting, I need a brush that's going to go down and do the lifting for me. And I happen to love this brush for that. But when I want to bring out my um, paint, this is all this brush is going to hold for me. So I'm not going to get very far in my paper painting with that much paint in here unless I'm looking to work kind of dry. So that's the second brush. This is the Mimic brush, a size 10 like the other two, and it's made to mimic squirrel hair. So let's see if it does a better job in, I'm loading it up and let's see how much pigment now it will carry onto my paper. Okay, maybe a little bit more than this, my, my uh, Simply Simmons. Definitely more than my silver ruby satin, but let's continue. So this is my synthetic squirrel and natural hair blend. I'm gonna be honest, these are my favorite brushes. I just use them constantly. I like the way they have the ability to carry paint out. I like everything about it. I love the feel of the brush. So this now, is what I'm getting from this brush. So you can see I'm getting much more pigment out here. Again, it's a size, a 10 brush. It's not my biggest brush. This brush doesn't go by the same sizes. This is a Raphael squirrel brush. They call them mop brushes. And it's really built to be the workhorse of carrying paint. So when I load this brush up and I bring it out, I actually have to let it drip before I bring it out. But now let's take a look. Look at all the pigment I have within this brush, the squirrel brush. It's, it's amazing all the paint that's there. So now let's talk about what does that mean to you as a painter? So now I wanna be able to move paint on my paper. So let's put this aside for a minute. Now I have a piece of watercolor paper and let's watch and see how much pigment these brushes will actually hold to see how much work I can do on this paper. So this is really simple. You can try this with any of your brushes, you know, and it gives you an idea of what is going on with your brush. What are you pulling out of your palette? Okay, so let's start at the beginning. I'm pulling out my, um, Silver Ruby Satin Brush. I'm loading it up with pigment. I already showed you how I can squeeze them out and how much paint they will hold. Now let's see what, how will this paint relate to uh, my paper? So if I wanna start on the corner here and I wanna see how far this brush is gonna hold, give me the pigment to move. And if I lay my brush down and I start to come across the paper, you can see that I'm totally running out of paint. Not much is happening there. Okay, so let's try now the simple, Simply Simon brush. Again, I'm loading it up. I'm coming out here and I'm coming right next to it and I'm coming down. Again, not much paint because synthetic brushes are not designed to hold a tremendous amount of paint. Okay, next we'll try the Mimic, which is a synthetic squirrel. Let's load that one up and let's see if it gives me, since it's supposed to mimic natural squirrel hair, let's see what this one does. So oh, definitely I'm getting more pigment, but I'm not really making it totally too far. You can see it's putting it down but it's, I'm really losing my pigment as I come along. Let's try my squirrel and synthetic blend. Remember, it should hold a little more because it has the squirrel air, which has the ability to hold in that liquid. Okay, you can definitely see much more than the others. 
and I'm only going over this once, but you could see the width of this I've lost, lost. Here, I've look at the width I've stayed with, where you can actually see both sides of it before I start losing it. Okay, so that's those first four. Now we're gonna pick up, and I know this is a slightly different size. Um, it's not exactly the same size as this brush, but I still want you to see what this squirrel brush will do. So I'm gonna load this brush up, and now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna bring my pigment in. And you could see how much more full of pigment this is. So what does that mean to you as a watercolorist? It means that if you wanna paint a nice big juicy wash of color, and you're using a synthetic brush, you're not carrying the pigment from end to end of the paper. And we really need that to happen when we're painting something and we wanna fill it with color, uh, fill it with pigment and you know, let our water flow. It's not gonna happen with a little brush like that. Let's take a moment and let's just look at a couple of flat brushes. Now the same theory applies with a flat brush. So I have a one and a half inch, not one and a quarter inch, a silver black velvet. And I'm gonna pick up a two inch, no, it's another one and a half inch, 100% synthetic. So let's see what happens when we pick up, first I'll just wet them, just so get the brushes wet. And now with my synthetic brush, I'm gonna come in and pull pigment, load it up. Remember, this is all synthetic, this brush. And now I'm gonna squeeze it out. So of course, now I'm working with a one and a half inch brush. I'm gonna get much more pigment out of this, but it's still my synthetic brush. It's not a tremendous amount of pigment. Let's try my squirrel synthetic blend. Let's take a look at the pigment now that this brush wants to carry. What is my pigment load on this brush? So now I know, oops, that's even running off. Now I know that if I'm looking to really move pigment on my paper and I'm gonna pick up a one and a half inch flat brush, my synthetic brush is not gonna give me a tremendous amount of pigment. It doesn't have the ability to do that. My synthetic squirrel blend is giving me a tremendous amount. And that holds true when I look at all of my shapes and size brushes, this fact holds true with all of them. Okay, um, if you're enjoying this, please like below and subscribe to my channel so you can see other videos that I'll be doing comparing certain watercolor products and supplies. Um, but please subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, and make sure you stay to the end because I'm gonna have a bonus buy for you at the end that I really think you're gonna enjoy in this buyer's guide. Okay, so now let's look at the flat brushes. I have three different one and a half inch flat brushes. I have one that's 100% synthetic. I have one that is a synthetic, called Mimic, synthetic to act like a squirrel. So it is to mimic a squirrel. And I have my all time favorite, my silver black velvet. Um, they're all one and a half inch brushes. And let's take a look at these brushes loaded and see how they disperse the pigment. So what we're thinking about is, if I'm gonna work on a big piece of paper and I need to do a big juicy sky filled with color and pigment or whatever I'm painting, and I wanna move lots of paint fast, I wanna make sure my brush, I'm using the right brush that has the capacity to do what I need. So let's load this brush up. I went to a little bit of a darker pigment because I think you could see it better on the paper. And now with my synthetic brush, I'm just gonna come right across the paper and we'll take a look at how that brush brings paint out. And you can see by the second swipe, I'm really losing it, okay? So now let's take a look at my, my 
mimic brush that is designed to mimic squirrel hair. So I'm gonna load that one up. I'll start at the bottom on this one and we'll come across. And I'll come across again. And you could see, even though it's getting lighter, I'm still maintaining a second edge, which tells me that there's still pigment in here. Okay, so we know the synthetic brush didn't get me through two lines. My mimic got me through the two lines. You know, you can see it's very faded through here where I was running out of pigment. Let's see now, what is my silver black velvet one and a half inch flat brush? How is this brush gonna work? Starting at the end, using even pressure, coming through, coming back, coming down, starting to lose a little bit down here, but I have enough in my brush to complete this entire paper. So you can see even through here, as much as it started to fade out, I still have pigment there. So with this brush, I was able to, I just let that run a little bit. I was able to get pigment completely over this entire paper. Biggest recommendation for my buyer's guide to get my money's worth would always be to purchase the silver black velvet brushes. Um, I find that they're just wonderful. Um, they're not too expensive, but I always say, keep your eye on sales, follow on Amazon. I will make sure that I have links below that you can go check out these brushes. They are affiliate links. I may make a small percentage on it, but it costs you nothing to go check out these links. Well, now that we went over the different brushes and their usage, you can make a better informed decision in what you expect and want from a brush you purchase. Your bonus buy today is a great deal. The Mimic brushes, um, which I happen to really like. I think for a beginner, this is the best buy you can get. So the Mimic brushes come in a set of eight for $35 or under. That is a terrific deal. Eight brushes for $35 and under. Sometimes they run a sale. You can find them at different prices. Um, check out my link below. It's an affiliate link to Amazon. You could see these brushes. You can read about the sizes of them and do your comparative shopping, but please check them out. I think you're going to really like them. Well, have some great painting days ahead of you, and don't forget, look for my next video, because I'm going to be comparing the graphite pencils and sticks and regular pencils. People ask me all the time, do you erase your pencil lines? What do you do with them? And I use water-soluble graphite pencils, and I'm going to show you how I use them and why I would highly recommend them for most of the artists. So you have a great day, and I'll see you in my next video.